Just happy to be here with my brothers on blog. Ready to get to it. Man, I'm so excited about this show. But you yourself a professional athlete and you, you get paid to catch the ball and can't. Like, that just makes no sense to me. Biggest takeaway is that if you are a West Coast team, take your behind to the East Coast two days beforehand so you can at least get one day acclimated to the time difference. The effort they put up against the Warriors, lethargic, pitiful. We won't give too many more words to it, so we're going to move on. And here we go. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Now, the Big Game Christian Sports Network proudly presents Donnie Epting, Dwayne Sutton, and Willie Epting. And they are in the zone. Here we go. In the zone sports, second one. (laughs) Coming down with three, two, one, leave passed out of it. Hello out there, sports fans. Once again, it's the In the Zone Sports Show. Here on the one, the only, Big Game Christian Sports Network, the In The Zone Sports Show is being brought to you by Drain and Plumbing Services. When plumbing issues arise, don't just call a plumber. Call the master plumber. Call Ken Richardson at 214-317-7881. Call him up today for a quick estimate. My name is Donnie Epting, the captain of the In The Zone Sports Squad. We are ready to deliver another episode to you. What I mean by we is these other two fellas. Let's go ahead and introduce them to the world. They are more than the other two fellas, by the way. That's just a little nickname I got for them. Other fella number one, Dwayne Sutton, coming out of Slidell, Louisiana. What's going on with you, man? Hello, world. The Wolf is on the line. Uh, according to my sources, this just in. Breaking news. Football is back, baby. Did y'all know that? Mm-hmm. Y'all know that? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. God's good. Amen. Amen. Willie F. Ting Jr. out there in Texas. What's going on, sir? What's happening, world? Football is back. What's going on, my brothers? Why are you screaming? You know, hollering and stuff. You're right. You're excited. I'm, huh? I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Football season is here. Let's go. Man, you sound angry than a mug. Shut up. What? I said quiet. What's the matter? You deep or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's good to talk to y'all, man. And, uh, hey, as both of you said, football is back. We've got one full week of college football down. Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL season week one has started. And we have the full schedule coming up on Sunday and a doubleheader on Monday. So as these two fellas have both said, football is back. Yes, sir. Oh, anyway, sorry about that. I got a little excited, too. Let's go ahead and get into the matters at hand, guys. Y'all ready? Let's do this. And... Here we go. Let's wrap up week one of the college football season. We had a lot to go on. Lord have mercy, we had a lot to go on. Uh, We're going to talk about our biggest jaw-dropping moment or game or performance or etc. Whatever we see fit to talk about that took place in week one, we're going to do just that. Let's flip the coin uh, it lands on the Wolster, Dwayne Sutton. You're going to go first. Biggest moment from week one of the college football season. You got it, man. Les Miles' brain fumble. I'm not sure how in the world LSU lost that game. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how they were set up to lose that game. But I was going to tell you, I, they, I could tell you how they lost. <laughs> they had no business losing that game. They had no business putting that game on Brandon Harris's arm at all. I know Fournette was that. That's no excuse. You in field goal range, get you a few more yards, kick the field goal, win the game. Harris isn't built for stuff like that, man. Still. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I do. Still. At some point, you got to get better. He can't throw. You got to get better at some point, though. I mean, (laughs) this is your third or part of your third season starting. When do you get it? I'm just asking. When do you get it, man? Listen, listen. I'm 5'9". I'm not going to wake up tomorrow 
and and, and expect to be six feet. This is it. This is I, as much as I'm going to grow. I'm five. That's five. it. I, I, I wake up every morning expecting to be six two. And every morning you get disappointed, don't you? Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Very much Brandon so. Brandon Harris has. He, there is no growth spurt. He's done. This is as good as he's going to get. You never should have put him in that position. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'll actually do you one better, though, Dwayne, on that point here real quick. If not for a couple of Wisconsin boo-boos, LSU wouldn't have been in the game anyway. This is true. If Wisconsin was dominating that game for the most part. This Fournette, is wasn't able, Fournette was not able to get going. Wisconsin was dominating LSU. So I'm just I'm just saying, if not for the interception by the quarterback, uh uh Bart, Bart Starr's uh namesake there, uh if if not for the fumble on the third down conversion by the receiver, you know, Tradarius White, man, he was all over that field. But Wisconsin's mistakes led LSU back in it. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Drop balls didn't help either. Malachi Dupree. Oh, boy. Right, right. All right. So we got your jaw-dropping moment from week one. Let's turn it over to the OG, William Tain Jr. You got the mic. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. You guys talking about LSU like that. I'm going to go ahead and stay in the SEC. Very proud of the way that my man – who I picked as the player to watch in the Southeastern Conference came back against North Carolina and showed up. Nick Chubb, 33 carries, 222 222 yards and two scores. To include the 55-yarder, that was a dazzling display of running to seal that game. He he showed that he was back, the 5'10", 228-pound junior. Get this, guys. He had a better statistical day than Wayne Gallman. My Heisman Trophy winner, Dalvin Cook, everybody's favorite, Leonard Fournette, and last year's runner-up, Christian McCaffrey. Good to see him back, man. Good to see him back. It was. I tweeted during that game, uh, the Heisman race is happy to have Nick Chubb back in it. Because before Chubb went down, in my eyes, he was the front runner. He, he was the leader, even over Fournette. And maybe because I kind of foreshadowed seeing Fournette, you know, going uh, three-net. After the Alabama game, but you know, wow, three yeah. in, yeah, three. The nits. Chubster, word upster, yeah, Chub b- Rock, Chub Rock, baby. All right, I'm gonna go real quick with this. Um, as far as Week One, the Almighty SEC, what happened to you? <laughs> what happened to you? Mississippi State loses against a 28 point underdog in South Alabama, who just started playing football on the FBS level in 2012. Kentucky had a big. You're right. Who is Lou? Kentucky had a big lead against Southern Miss in Jay Hobson's debut. Shout out to Jay Hobson, former coach of Alcorn State in the SWAC. They, Kentucky had a big lead on Southern Miss. I went to sleep. Woke up the next morning. What is this? Kentucky lost. I mean, I, I, I went to bed as, as Donnie Epting and woke up as King Joffrey Jofa. What is this? <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. USM I mean, wins? Right. Exactly. Uh... Let's talk about Tennessee struggled against Appalachia State on the opening night. Tennessee had no business struggling against App State. I'm just saying, man. No business struggling at all against Appalachian State. The SEC, oh, oh, not to mention, not to mention. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this one out there. Ole Miss? What? 28-6, to six, right? They led 28-6, to six, Dwayne. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I bet. Right. Hey. And, yeah. and that was it. Can't believe that they blew a twenty-eight to six lead and ultimately <laughs> lost that game. I, I just, I, man, I don't know. Let, let's let's move on before I say some stuff about the SEC that's uh un unchristian like uh, on this network. They get on my nerves. Anyway, I digress. Shout out BGC Sports. Yes. All right, guys. We uh we unveiled picks, picks, picks week one on our website in the zone dashboards.net. Let's go through the records. Dwayne and Donnie, seven and four. Dwayne and I both lost with actually Dwayne Willie and I all lost 
Oklahoma, UCLA, LSU. Thanks, guys. Not really. Uh, Dwayne and I were seven and four. Willie was six and five. Willie, for whatever reason, took North Carolina over Georgia. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Dwayne took <laughs> USC against Alabama. Dwayne, how that one work out for you? It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> hurts, comma, really Jalen. Did you really think they were going to beat them? It hurts. Dwayne was picking with his, He was picking with no, his uh, I, I, picking I with his hatred. questions about them. The same thing with LSU. Who's your quarterback? Again, like I said, it hurts. The, <laughs> the guy I told y'all to look out for a couple of weeks ago, Blake Barnett, got the start, and and then he got he got hurts. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> he got hurts because because dude went to the bench and that was a wrap. Um, we, none of us mentioned Oklahoma losing to Houston. Um, how how close were you guys picking to picking Houston to win that game? I was very close because in one of the previous shows, I remember saying that they had a very good chance of beating OU. And OU has had problems with uh, dual threat quarterbacks, and Mr. Ward Jr. gave it to him. Oh, I'm kind of shocked you didn't, because I, I remember that. I thought yeah. he was really going to go with them. I, I went thought, with OU simply because I got to live. You know, my <laughs> wife is booming sooner all day. Uh, and I really, truly believed in in, in uh, P. Ryan and, and Mixon. P. Ryan got injured some in yeah. that game. Yeah, and, and that's when the game seemed to turn, when uh, P. Ryan went out with that shoulder injury. And Mixon, I mean, Mixon's a little dude, man. You know, P. Ryan's a little bit bigger. Mixon's little. He couldn't really carry the load like that. And for whatever reason, Baker Mayfield uh, had a brain fumble, as Dwayne would say. Uh, and, and it just didn't work out for OU that day. I mean, <sighs> fellas, how many more times are we going to see kick sixes in college football? <laughs> Until we don't I, see him anymore. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just, I mean... How do you not prepare for that? Right. You got all these fat dudes out there blocking for a field goal, but then, you know, when when the return team catches it and this guy from Houston caught it and almost stepped out of bounds. That's how far back he was. That's exactly hey. how far back he was. 109.8 or 9. Hey, speak, speaking of big dudes blocking, uh, you better watch out for OU's offensive line, man. They're really soft. Keep an eye on that going forward. Hey, yeah. say that right. Soft, <laughs> right? Or oh, as Enzo Capital and Big Cass would say on uh on WWE, soft S A W F T. Oh, anyway, my bad. All right, <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> All right, so once again, we'll have our picks up for week two uh, this weekend for the college football and the NFL games as the NFL season gets underway. Once again, on our website at endthezone-sports.net. Always chime in with us on our Twitter page at ITZ Sports Show. And on our Facebook page, also at ITZ Sports Show. All right, guys, a couple of minutes left in the segment. Uh, let's go ahead and discuss what we're looking forward to in week two of the college football season. Willie F. Ting Jr., start us off, please. Man, I'm going to go out to the Pacific Northwest. Washington Huskies, true sophomore quarterback Jake Browning, last week against Rutgers, 18 to 27 for 287 yards and three scores. I know they're playing against uh, Mark Schlereth University, also known as the Idaho Vandals. But I'm looking forward to seeing what this kid's going to do, man. He's got his best receiver back in John Ross, five catches for 90 yards and two touchdowns. Also had a dazzling 92 yard kickoff return for another score. They're starting to make some noise, man. They're already ranked number eight in the country. Um, I'm looking for what they're going to do against Stanford at home on the 30th of September. And then the week after that, they travel to Eugene to take on the Ducks. All right, Dwayne Sutton, week two, what you looking forward to? This is the worst week following up one of the best weeks ever in college football. And in this one, you find a diamond in the rough. So I pulled Arkansas TCU. Arkansas coming off of a, a comeback win against La Tech. TCU had an actual fight against South Dakota State. The Jack Rats. So, I, I want to see this thing, you know, play out. And uh, are they going to actually uh, 
redeem the SEC here. Mm. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the SEC, we've got an SEC versus ACC matchup at the Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee, yes, between yes. the Virginia Tech Hokies and the Tennessee Volunteers. The SEC, we need to see if Tennessee is going to be able to bounce back after that near loss to Appalachian State in week one. Virginia Tech is coming off a big win. New head coach uh, over there, Justin Fuente, who came in from Memphis for the hokey, hokey, hokey high. Virginia Tech Hokies. Fellas, that's going to wrap it up for segment one. Uh, When we come back, we've got a special guest. We're going to talk a little more football. Actually, a lot more football. We'll do all that and more when we return here on the Zone Sports Show here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network after this timeout. How long would you wait for your shower to get hot? How long would you wait for your cell phone to fully charge? How long would you wait to get relief from your nasal congestion? If you're congested now and you want powerful relief now, use Afrin No Drip. Afrin starts working in seconds and keeps working for 12 hours. So why wait when you can start to get relief in seconds with Afrin? Afrin, powerful congestion relief without the wait. Use as directed. For more information, go to Afrin.com. Welcome back to the In The Zone Sports Show here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. This segment of the In The Zone Sports Show is being brought to you by Drain and Plumbing Services. When plumbing issues arise, don't just call a plumber. Call the master plumber. Call Ken Richardson at 214-317-7881. Call him up today for a quick estimate. We are back. Dwayne Sutton, Willie Epting Jr., I'm Donnie Epting, and we have a special guest on at this time to introduce that guest Let's toss it over to Willie Epstein Jr. Willie. Yes, sir, Donnie. Thank you for that, man. I'm very excited, very happy to bring it to the stage, bring it to the microphone. Mr. Michael Hunter Jr., cornerback for the New York Giants. Mike, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about you, Mr. Willie? Doing well, man. This is your second time on the ITZ Sports Show, so you know we appreciate uh, you taking some time out of your busy schedule, man, to talk with us, especially oh, yes, on this sir, no uh, a few days before the start of the football season. So let's just dive right into that, man, because I know your life has been a bit of a whirlwind. Tell me, yes, tell sir, us no what it's, yeah, tell us what it's been like, man, since the Sugar Bowl until now. What your life has been like? Yeah. Uh, it's really been crazy. It's probably been the longest football process I've been through. Uh, you know, like you said, planning a Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day, then two weeks later, getting right into training for um, Pro Day, of course. And then after Pro Day, you wait a couple weeks to draft. And then, uh, of course, all the OTAs and camp, rookie mini camps and mini camps and it's straight to training camp. So, like I said, this process has definitely been a long one, but one, one I've enjoyed the ride along the way. Yeah, you're definitely living your dream, man. Um you know, I know you're very excited. I know your parents, who uh, Donnie and I know very well, are very proud of you. Um, you know, we are so happy for you, man, that you are able to live out your dream. And, you know, we, we're behind you 100 percent and we got your back and we're praying for you and all those things that go, that go with that. So tell me or tell us uh, what veteran on the Giants has kind of taken you under their wing and served as a bit of a mentor to you? Uh, the veteran I'll have to say is uh, Dominique Rogers Cromartie. He's a cornerback as well. So he's uh, been in the league about eight, nine years. But basically, just since day one, is a guy that's kind of mentored me. Uh, he loved my skill set. He said uh, my potential is through the roof. And he kind of gives me tips every day, showing me little things I can work on. And just a, just a guy that I can go to every day and just get better and just find a way to see how he is stuck around this league so long and try to do the same. Yes, yeah, definitely uh, somebody right there to uh, definitely have in your corner. He's been doing it for a while, and I know exactly. that how excited I know how, how exciting that must be, man, for somebody like that to uh, kind of grab onto you and, and show you the ropes. And speaking yeah, of that, man, we you said that, you know, you, you're show, you've shown or he's told you that you've got a lot to bring, lot to, bring to the table. I saw some yes, tape, man. I saw some tape of you in practice. I saw that incredible interception that you had to end a two-minute drive. 
tell us uh, some of the things that some of the coaches have played, said about your playmaking ability. Oh, definitely. So they, they love, like, uh, kind of similar to uh, what Rogers Cromartie was saying, they love my upside. So they, uh, they tell me every day it's hard to find a six-foot corner that can run like I can and uh, have good hips and ball skills. And just say definitely, if I just keep working and keep, keep my head on a straight path that I can definitely become a starter in this league one day. So that's that's really my mindset every day, just just fine-tuning my skills and trying to be the best me I can be and just go get out there every day and get better. That's awesome, man. Dwayne, go ahead, sir. Mike, how you doing, man? The Wolves to here. Dwayne good. Sutton. Yeah, how you doing, man, I'm, I'm great. I'm doing well, man. I'm happy you, you came back to join us, brother. Uh, we really yeah, appreciate yes, you no being doubt. here. Anytime, sir. I now, love you guys. Anytime. Man, so you know you're always welcome. This is home <laughs> in the yeah, zone yes, sports. Sir, yes. yes, sir. So, appreciate it. Let's get to it, man. Um, you know, they've done away with the rookie symposium. So what did you take away uh, from the new rookie transition program this year? To be honest, I think it was it was it was really beneficial to be honest, because uh, of course coming from coming from college, like you really don't know a lot about like W two forms and how money works and how budgeting work and how liability claims. So like just little small things like that that they don't really teach you in college when coming to the real world is uh, something that I really benefited on a lot. And, of course, just uh, talking to veteran guys that come back in and talk, like Michael Strahan and guys like that, on their experience in the NFL, that goes a long way as well. Man, that's that's good because you hear some financial nightmares when, when, you know, we get guys finally get a hold of money. So that's great, exactly. man, that you, you're getting those tips and – and as long as you apply it, that's the thing. Get the information and apply it, man. I, I, I believe you're going to do big things on and off the field, brother. Um, yes, sir, exactly. I appreciate it. Since joining the Giants now, is there anything that you may that may have occurred that you wish you could do differently now that you have spent some time with them? Uh, to be honest, no. It's uh, just it's really a first class organization. Uh, They've got me every opportunity to make plays and uh, just be the best me I can be. So, really, as far as regret since being here, I don't I don't have any at all. So, yeah, I feel like I go out there every day and, and bust my butt and just do everything I can to contribute to the team. So, as far as regrets, man, I can't really think of any off the top of my head. Yo, I'm, I got one more for you before I hang you over to Dunning because I'm glad you brought up bringing out the best in you. So when you say yeah. bringing out the best in you, you want to face the best competition. Who's the most no, no, no. fiercest? Who's the fiercest competitor in that wide receiving core? Uh, to be honest, I'm going to have to go to OBJ. Of course, that's probably one. He, he brings it every day. Like, Of course, you see it on TV with all the dancing and the playmaking on Sunday, but but he brings it Monday through Saturday as well. So uh, he gets out there. Uh, of course, the talent is is unbelievable, but his work ethic matches it. So I definitely have to go with OBJ. He's, he's him and Victor is the leader of the group. But but he goes out every day and just 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 kills it. To be honest, and going against him every day, him and Eli, it, it makes me better. To be honest, every day. All right, I'm gonna head it off to Cap. All right, we are here on the In the Zone Sports Show talking to Michael Hunter Jr., cornerback of the New York football Giants. Yes, Mike, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we appreciate you coming on with us, man. I just got a couple of questions I want to throw at you. Uh, yes, sir. Speaking of the Giants, uh, you got to play yes. in the annual preseason affair called the Snoopy Bowl because both teams yeah. play in MetLife Stadium, of course. Uh, you got exactly. to play against the Jets. Talk about the rivalry between the teams, the Giants and the Jets, and the fans, how they embrace that rivalry up there in New York? Oh, it, it's, to, to be honest, it's, it's amazing. It kind of reminds me back to my college days when you when you play the the Oklahoma Oklahoma State. Uh, of course, I went to Indiana, so it's kind of like our Purdue rivalry as well. But it, it's, uh, it's, it's it's the fans are it, they could be cruel, but at the same time, it's, it's all love. So it's, it's the third preseason game, and every every seat was packed. It, it was basically a sold-out stadium for a preseason game, and you rarely ever see that. So that just goes to show how big the rivalry, rivalry is, and it doesn't matter if it's preseason, regular season, playoffs. It, it matters to the fans. 
Indeed, man. I actually got to see the uh, replay of it on NFL Network, and I heard the announcers call your name a few times in the Snoopy Bowl, man. I was watching it and <laughs> yes, very sir. proud of you, man. They, <laughs> I saw you out there doing your thing. Yeah. yeah um, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. One more question for you. Uh, okay. Everyone, of course, will probably ask you, man, how's it facing Odell Beckham Jr. in practice? OBJ, you get to face OBJ. I want to ask yes, you about sir. a familiar face from your Big 12 days. You mentioned the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State rivalry. Uh, Sterling yes, Shepard is up there with the Giants. How was it seeing yes. a familiar face like him uh, in practice every day? Oh, it's great. Just, just knowing, like you said, kind of smack talk that goes along with it. So that just makes practice even fun and just going in every day. So he wears his Oklahoma gear, I wear my Oklahoma State gear every once in a while. And just seeing that familiar face being from a, a similar area is great to be honest. And both of us are competitors, so that, that translates to the field and that. Basically, we make each other better every day, and I think he's going to do well this year and make some big plays. All right, indeed, my brother. And, uh, man, we just want to tell you that, uh, of course, we're rooting for you. Uh, again, we appreciate you for coming on and talking with us, man, second time on. And uh, we just we have an open invitation to you, man. Anytime you want to come on and talk uh, football with us, you have a yes, place. Sir. You have a place here in the house with the Zone Sports team. I'm going to toss it back to Willie, man. Once again, good to talk to you. All right, thank you, and appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Willie. Yes, sir. All right, Mike. Man, we appreciate you coming on, man. We know you uh, are getting prepared uh, for tomorrow's activities with the Cowboys uh, being the first game of the season here in Dallas. Man, we wish you nothing but the best. Just like Donnie said, man, anytime you want to come on and talk football with us, talk sports with us, we'd be glad to have you. Um, So we're going to go ahead and let you go, man, and uh, take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you down the road. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Again, appreciate y'all and great talking with you. All right. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's Michael Hunter Jr., cornerback from the New York Giants. Guys, he is making the most of his opportunity. Uh, As you heard him say that the the, the coaches are raving about his playmaking ability. Uh, I think his pro day up in Stillwater back in March really turned some heads. I think he ran like a 4-4-40 and had a 44-inch vertical leap. And uh, he's got a good size of six feet and about 195. So uh, we're looking forward to big things from Michael Hunter Jr., man. Indeed, man. Um, and he'll be on that 53-man roster, I do believe, uh, you know, before before it's all said and done. Uh, but, hey, getting to see guys like OBJ, Eli Manning, uh, Victor Cruz, Sterling Shepard. Uh, they brought in Olivier Vernon from the Miami Dolphins. So they, they – oh, and don't forget about JPP. Uh, we're not even going to talk about July 4th of 2015, but they even got JPP up there, man. So Mike has got some good company around him. And of course we hope for nothing but the best for him uh, coming up in the 2016 season. Speaking of NFL fellas, um, we got some predictions to make as the season is getting going here. Uh, We're going to start out. We're going to kind of split this up over the last two segments of the show or last segment uh, and a little bit here over the rest of the show. We're going to start off with some of the individual awards. Guys, I know y'all ready to do this. So, hey, let's get to it, right? Let's do it. All right. So, the individual awards. Let's go in rotation with our Coach of the Year first. All right? Coach of the Year. uh, Dwayne, it's on you. Who you got? Surprise, surprise. The hoodie one. Go on, Bill Belichick. Um, Dwayne, can I can I borrow something from you? What you need? Oh Lord! Give it back. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> I'm just saying that's like the with last interest. person. That's the last person I thought you would go with. Hey man, I'm sorry. I I just firmly believe as long as Belichick is on that sideline and he has a Brady, which he won't have for a quarter of the season, but right, that's a deadly combination. Yeah. All right, Willie Epstein Jr. Go ahead and sound the alarm, man. Homer. And I, I'm already Homer? I'm filling it in for you, so I already know who it is. <laughs> sound, it, sound it again, man. Homer. <laughs> Watch you throw a cover ball at us. Yeah, nah man. I'm yeah. coming with the real. Jack Del Rio and my Oakland Raiders. Coach of the year, baby. All right. Um this is crazy, but all three of us have picked coaches out of the American Football Conference, also known as the AFC to the kids out there. Um, 
I'm going to go with Gus Bradley of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Way out quiet. <laughs> really? Yeah. Way out quiet. I love, quiet. I love, really? I love that choice, man. Yeah. I love that choice. That's not a bad one. Okay. All right. Um, let's go with comeback player of the year. Can I go first on this one? Do that. Yes, sir. Y'all remember a cat who uh, won a Heisman Trophy but then had it taken away from him? And no, I'm not talking about O.J. Simpson. <laughs> but, he went to the, but he went to the same school. Reggie? Reggie Bush, as Keith Jackson would say. Whoa, Nelly, Reggie Bush, San Diego, California. He's a host and a half. I'm going with Reggie Bush. Mm. I, I, I see something in that offense with Greg Roman. There's a reason they brought in the Reggie Bush. And, of course, the key words are, if he can stay healthy. <laughs> but I'm Office going with Reggie Bush. Wow. Uh, Willie? <laughs> wow. Let's see you top that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I teetered between him and Victor Cruz. But I'm going to go with Jordy Nelson from the Green Bay Packers. Okay. At least 100 catches this year. Like it. I like it. Dwayne Sutton. I'm going to go with Kelvin Benjamin. Okay. We saw that offense be productive without their starting wide receiver, the number one. We're going to show – they're going to show you just – he's going to show you just how much he was missed last year. All right. Dwayne, we're going to keep it with you. Your offensive rookie of the year, please. I got to go with Ezekiel Elliott. I'm sorry. I just don't see how you can struggle at all behind that Dallas Cowboy offensive line. I think this is set up perfectly for him. This year is the best offensive line in the history of football. They this the, I'm telling you, the two and A's, the Stepnoshkis, they got nothing on this offensive line right here. This is the best offensive line in the history of football. My Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, making an appearance on the End Zone Sports Show is none other than Dallas Cowboy owner Jerry Jones. These here are my Dallas Cowboys. Willie Epstein Jr., what do you have for your offensive rookie of the year? I'm going to go with the man you just mentioned in the interview with Mr. Hunter from OU, Sterling Shepard. Wow. In that offense, in that offense with Eli, I've been hearing he's been making a bunch of plays in the preseason and in camp. I'm looking for at least 80 catches from Mr. Shepard. All right, Corey Coleman from Baylor with the Cleveland Browns. That's what I'm going with. I like Corey Coleman, but he plays I for Cleveland. Went, I, <laughs> I almost <laughs> went with him too. Look, Hugh Jackson is their coach. Hugh Jackson is a freaking offensive genius. Cleveland's not going to win a division, and Cleveland's not going to the playoffs. And matter of fact, Cleveland's not going to even finish 500. But that offense, that offense is a good hands, man. Watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. Defensive, oh, rookie, like of, defensive rookie of the year, we got about 60 seconds left. Uh, Vernon Hargraves, Florida Gator, Tampa Bay cornerback. Willie. Jalen Ramsey, defensive back, Jacksonville Jaguars. And I almost went there. All I right. Did. Almost. Okay. Dwayne, who you got? Second coming of Darnell Dockett, Rock- Robert Kendichi. And he was my third choice. All right. With the uh, Arizona Cardinals. All right. Uh, defensive player of the year. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this, fellas. We're going to put a pin in it because we're coming down towards the end of the second segment here. We're going to come back. These are the awards that we have left. Defensive player of the year, offensive player of the year, and, of course, the most valuable player. And then we're going to pick our playoff teams. Your four division winners, your two wild cards. We're going to go with each conference's championship game. And, of course, Super Bowl and those winners. So when you come back here on the other side of the break to the end zone sports show, we've got more predictions with Willie, Dwayne and Donnie. We'll talk to you again soon here on the other side of the break. Let's take this time out here on the big game Christian sports network. It's not a team without t-shirts. Custom t-shirts from custom Inc are the easy way to connect any group. Our online design lab makes it simple to create a shirt design that your group will love. Or you can easily upload your own logo. Whether you need one shirt or thousands, Custom Ink can print any size order. And we know you can't wait for your new t-shirts. 
That's why we offer free shipping, and on-time delivery is guaranteed. Get a free price quote today at customink.com. We welcome you back to the In The Zone Sports Show here on the official broadcast station of the Dallas Charge Pro Fast Pitch here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. This segment of the In The Zone Sports Show is being brought to you by Pure Flix. Enjoy faith and family movies, TV shows, and educational programs anytime, anywhere for only $7.99 per month. Sign up for your 30-day free trial by going to bgcsports.net or on the BGC Sports app and click on the Pure Flix banner and start your free trial today. Y'all know what? I think I live for the third segment uh, sponsorship. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm right I'm there with you. Out. That was good. You was good. You was quick. Not <laughs> too well. It was real good. <laughs> Stop it. All right. We're going to get back to our uh, predictions here. Willie, Dwayne, and Donnie on the mics with you. Uh, we left off or we were getting ready to discuss our defensive player of the year. So far, we've done defensive rookie, offensive rookie player, excuse me, rookie of the year, comeback player of the year, and coach of the year. Defensive player of the year, um, Dwayne, who you got? They can call him Lil' Warty Big Dollars. They can call him Hometown. They can call him Mr. 504. But you're going to call him Mr. for sure, because that's Tyron Matthew. Get it. All right. Willie Epting Jr. Man, I almost went with the little homie out of the N.O., man. But I'm going to the other coast. This dude is all over the field all the time. I think he might even play some offense. <laughs> Luke Keekley. Mm, he does. He does. He scored touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask Tony <laughs> Romo. Oh, gosh. A- ask Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> ask Russell Wilson. All right. Um, <gasps> I, too, went with uh, Tyron Matthew, uh, safety from the Arizona Cardinals. He got that new money. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money. Money. <laughs> yeah. All right. Offensive player of the year. Willie, I want you to start this one off. Uh, real quick, Donnie, I forgot to mention uh, Keekley is a middle linebacker for the NFC champion and Super Bowl champ or Super Bowl runner up Carolina Panthers. Sorry about that. And offensive play offensive player of the year. Antonio Brown. <laughs> Wide receiver, Pittsburgh Steelers. Thank you. Uh he looks like Wesley Snipes from, from New Jack City. Dwayne Sutton. I'm gonna go with the workhorse. All day. Adrian Peterson. Hmm. Y'all know what I like about this? We've got three different players. I'm going to go to Southern California. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Southern California. And uh, really. Hollywood has a team again. Mm. And, and Hollywood has a star on that team. Mm. I'm on Todd Gurley. Los Angeles Rams running back. Todd Gurley. <laughs> Flacco, Flacco, we got Hollywood. We got Hollywood. <laughs> this guy. Oh, Lord. What Mr. Oh, Lord. That? Right. I, I don't know, but Mr. <laughs> oh, Lord, uh, for most valuable player, we're going to start with you, man. You, you, wow. <laughs> One, y'all need to study your shaft and get up on Peebles Hernandez. You don't know who Peebles is. You failed in life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a failure right now. Thank you for that. Notice the silence. (laughs) Hey, I'm just telling you. Peoples Hernandez, come on down. Got to know you peoples. Anyway. All right. What are we picking up at? MVP, (laughs) peoples. (laughs) (laughs) More like pebbles. Right. (laughs) Just don't hate on peoples. Just don't rob MVP. Go, Pat, go. Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Subpar season bounce. last year. <laughs> Got to bounce back. Yeah. All right. Willie Epteen Junior. Jay I chose. This, I chose this fella last year. Uh, I'm going to go with him again this year. I think he's going to have a a great season. It's not going to be nearly as injury filled as it was. 
No. Ben Roethlisberger, quarterback, Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. So if I line you two guys up back to back, what does that mean? Oh, I think I just told you. <laughs> that means I line you up back to back. Uh, I'm going to go with Cameron Jarrell <laughs> Newton <laughs> as my MVP. <laughs> and he will go back to back with MVP awards. For the Carolina Panthers, Cameron Jarrell Newton. Don, All right, huh? Why are you saying it's that dude's entire government name? Like you asked me on the hashtag Brothers of Baseball, this show that can also be heard here on the BGC Sports Network. Why are you doing that? Why are you talking about past stuff? Why are you asking about past? Um, let's go to our playoff teams. All right, so we'll do this. <laughs> we're gonna go with the division winners first, and we're gonna have to go round robin on this real quick. Our division winners first from the AFC. Then we'll give our two wild cards. Okay, so that's six teams. Dwayne Sutton, your division winners, your two wild cards from the AFC, please. Division winners, AFC. AFC East, New England Patriots. West, Denver Broncos. South, don't hate me, Coast Nations, but the Houston Texans will win it. Wow. North, Pittsburgh Steelers. Wild cards. Wild cards. The Baltimore Ravens and the Indianapolis Colts. Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> All right. He's got Patriots East, Steelers North, Texans South, Broncos West, Wild Cards, Baltimore, and the team that used to be in Baltimore that's now in Indianapolis, the Colts. Willie Epstein Jr., division winners, two Wild Cards. Mayflower Trucks. <laughs> yes. AFC <Stop> East. <laughs> New England Patriots. All right. AFC North, Pittsburgh Steelers. AFC South, Houston, Texas. AFC West, Oakland Raiders. Duh. Wild Card, Cincinnati Bengals, New York Jets. Mm, What? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make it unanimous with the Patriots winning the East and the Steelers winning the North. I'm going to go out to the AFC West first. And nobody's talking about this team, and I have no idea why. The Kansas City Chiefs, they're winning the West. They're going to sneak up on you like uh, like Smokey and Debo Pigeon Coop. Uh, AFC South. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hashtag, I believe in Blake Bortles. They're going to do it, man. They went in the South. Uh, wild card, Cincinnati Bengals and the Indianapolis Colts. All right. AFC Championship game prediction, Willie Epstein Jr. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers against the New England Patriots. All right. Dwayne Sutton. Uh, I actually had that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the, New, the New England Patriots and Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, guess what? I too, You had it too. I too have New England versus Pittsburgh. I'm not going to go white men can't jump with being thirsty again. <laughs> you you going to leave. You going to leave Miss Rosie alone. All right. So all three of us have New England versus Pittsburgh for the AFC championship. That ain't no fun. I know. I think that's the first time in all of our predictions that we've done that we have Ever. the same exact. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we've had that before. We all picked ULM versus uh, over Southern. I'm talking to next oh. to the NFC. <laughs> this guy here. <laughs> same thing. Four division winners, two wild cards. Um, this time, let's start with Willie. NFC East, the Michael Hunter Jr. led. No New York football giants. <laughs> NFC North. I'm proud of that guy, man. NFC North. The pack is back. Green Bay Packers. NFC South. Carolina Panthers will win their fourth straight. NFC South crown. Is it third or fourth? Well, at least it's, we know I've it's at least count. their second. Right. I've lost count. <laughs> we know it's at least their second. Anyway, the Panthers will win the South. AFC, or I'm sorry, NFC West. 
Seattle Seahawks, Wild Cards, Arizona Cardinals, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What? Lawson. <laughs> Dwayne <Dwayne's> Sutton. <laughs> NFC East, Washington. Yep, I flipped the coin. They won. Okay. <laughs> NFC West, Arizona Cardinals. NFC South, Carolina Panthers. And the North, Go Pack Go. All right. Wild I'm Cards. Going. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. I'm, oh, Wild I'm sorry. Cards. I have the Vikings, and I have the Seahawks. The Vikings with uh, Sam I am, presumably, <laughs> as their quarterback. He won't make it through this season. Good Lord. <laughs> Gosh. Dream crusher. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make it unanimous with the uh, Packers to win the NFC North and the Panthers to win the NFC South. Uh, the NFC East, I, too, am going with the New York football giants. Out West, I do have the Arizona Cardinals repeating. And then my two wild cards, I've got the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. And I teetered on that other wild card with the Saints, uh, with the likes of the Saints. Uh, the Vikings entered my my thought process, and uh, whoever is the runner-up in the East. <laughs> I think those will be the teams that will kind of contend for it. Uh, NFC Championship game, can I go first? Do it. By, by all means. Okay. I've got Green Bay versus Carolina. What? Dwayne, who you got? I'm actually going Green Bay, Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Willie. I'm going to make it unanimous with the Car- – I'm sorry, with the uh, Green Bay selection, but I got Green Bay in Seattle. Okay. Let's give you our Super Bowl predictions. These will be the winners from the AFC Championship game and the NFC Championship game. Dwayne Sutton, who's playing in Super Bowl 51 in NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas? So we're going to take a flashback, and we're going to have a Green Bay New England matchup. All right. Back to, uh, was it the 1996 season when they played in the uh, Superdome? When Brett Favre was Brett Favre. And Ty Law was Ty Law. You're right. <laughs> Willie, <laughs> Willie Upting Jr. Super Bowl MVP, Desmond Howard. Shout out to the big amazing blue. Uh, I have huh, a rematch of the Super Bowl in Detroit. Jerome Bettis, Ben Roethlisberger, all those guys. Pittsburgh, Seattle. All right. I have New England. And I have Carolina. Getting back. What you say? Defending their NFC championship all the way back to the Super Bowl, all the way to Houston. All right. And with about 100 seconds left in the show, world champions, Super Bowl 51. Who's winning it? Dwayne Sutton. Go, Pack, go. He's got Green Bay. Willie F. Team Jr. Give me the black and yellow, man. This will be their, what, seventh Super Bowl trophy? That makes my stomach hurt. And I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. What, about 20, 20, their 20 seconds, 21st, 22nd season in? I'm going with Carolina. I think they go out and finish it this year. And they get the job done. Super Bowl 51 in Houston. They will be your winners. All right, guys. uh, We've got about 45 seconds left. 45 seconds left. Any quick final thoughts? Willie. Yeah, once again, shout out to uh, Michael Hunter Jr., Michael Hunter Sr., his dad, his mom, Jackie Hunter. Uh, Hey, y'all know y'all are proud of that guy. Proud of your son, Monroe, West Monroe. Y'all stand up for this man. All right. Uh, Dwayne says Willie took about 20 seconds. Uh, We're going to have to holler at you next week. (laughs) 
Football is back, baby. Love y'all. And we love and support. We love all of the support that we get from all of our fans. From all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to the End Zone Sports Show here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. For Willie. For Dwayne. I'm Donnie. Stay tuned for From Press Box to Press Roll with Donald Ware. We'll talk to you again real soon. For now, we are out. God bless. Take care.